my God, we go. When it says go. go time, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, welcome once again, only slightly belatedly, to the Sin Shop live stream. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. I am Vegas Vic. And I'm Shape Daddy. So tonight, we are going to be, uh, we're going to be retreading a little bit of old water here tonight, but, uh, you know, we're going to be talking a little bit about the shop, but with the people that are actually out there swinging the hammers, sawing the things, and, and making the most beautiful floor you've ever seen. I'm going to show it to you here shortly. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, right, yeah, so but before we... Before we do, uh, tonight on Floor Talk, absolutely. But before we get into that, I just really wanted to give you a quick announcement on the shop, as always. Now, see, the Sin Shop is a uh, maker slash hacker space. Uh, we're located in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we offer the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, we're officially closed for renovation, but thanks to these gentlemen here, uh, we have some members who are uh, holding the shop open for uh, limited use. So, if you're in the Vegas area, you'd like to come help us get back in action, or just stop by and check out the shop, join our Discord and find out all that and much, much more. Now, how do you do that, you might ask? Well, you should. To join our Discord, hit up sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information on the shop. And to make sure you're notified of future events, including virtual ones just like this one, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sin shop. Also, I want to say a big thank you to Smart House Dumb Owner for throwing us not only a follow, but a subscribe as well. We thank you so much. All of that goes to help support the shop, and we really, really do appreciate it. All right, onward and upward. I guess, I, I guess first of all, uh, just a, a little bit about you guys. Now, you guys are basically the the backbone of the the crew that's actually doing the work right so we bought a building that needed to be deconstructed yep. and it had a lot of um unpermitted uh undesigned uh construction inside of it and there was some walls and material that was in place that we needed to remove and we had to figure out how to do that um uh, so Shape Daddy and I, we have a little bit of uh, construction background. And so um, we're the ones that go, hey, don't do that. It might hurt. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, we're also the ones who are like, yeah, sure. We'll stand on top of that with chainsaws as we're cutting it all apart. Yeah, let's let's do this from above <laughs> with chainsaws. Well, it's better than underneath with chainsaws. So uh, I mean, safety video. first, really. Well, yeah. it's safety third or it's not going to get done mm -hmm. uh it, well, you got to be quick enough. and you and you got to know what's going on and right. that's one of the problems that uh some of the things we're doing is um it's it's if you watch some of the videos it's large walls falling it's ceilings falling it's cutting uh water pipes and being able to patch them correctly back uh it's electrical mm -hmm. uh, removal and being able to deal with that safely um, there's a lot of time and thought that goes into that before we move um, so at the at the beginning though you had mentioned that there was a whole lot of like uh, stuff that wasn't quite up to code like what are some of the things that you guys have had to have had to yank out of there so there was effectively an entire two-story apartment building built inside of this place uh, kitchen bathroom all of it yeah it was it was like a, mm. a, a, a what is it a motel six express suite pretty much yeah and so it had a shower bathroom it had a small kitchen and a bedroom built into it above uh, a work area and there was another lower bathroom that was not on the original plans or a planning department at all um yeah. so I, why would, would why would it matter whether or not it was on the plans we would have to go through and permit them and to do that we'd have to have a, a structural reading and yeah. when you walked on the floor it moved which told us that it wasn't actually a structural um build at all yeah the the biggest issue was when we were going through it um both me and and Vic here, we knew it was not done correctly. We knew it was not uh -huh. done to, to code. I mean, we could tell that by walking across the thing and, oh, hey, the entire second floor is shaken. So knowing that, we knew it wasn't worth trying to get it permitted because it wasn't going to pass inspection. 
So at that point, the easiest thing is just, just say, all right, let's tear it down. Let's get it out of here realistically before anybody notices it was ever there in the first place and go from there. It's the concern that if the, if it's there and, you know, and you it, it, basically if like, if you show somebody that it's there, you now own it essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, and dealing with that problem and yeah. being able to say to, to basically remove it, um, mm -hmm. we no longer have to deal with that problem. We can come back in with a, a permitted build. We can come back in with yeah. what is legal and we can get a business license around that. We can say, Hey, this building is safe to occupy. It's, it's, it's not simple to do in Clark County. They have very strict uh, fire codes. They have very strict building mm -hmm. codes. Um, they yeah. probably have some of the, the most strict fire and building codes in the country. So it's a thing to where the more you can strip out of it and the more you can get back to what was there when it was originally sold and built, like what's on the plans, essentially. Right. If you can right. get back to that, then you're at, at zero. That's already been approved and everything right. else is, is, yeah. Originally, we had, there was a, a room in the center and then there was a bunch of satellite rooms around it. And we got rid completely of the stuff in the middle. And it, so is that, was that part of that, like getting back to zero, was that room there originally or that was gone? So the rooms, the three rooms that we took out were on the yeah. original building plans. Uh, mm -hmm. But since they were on the original building plans, uh, it's easy enough for us to go in the, um, the renovation plans and just say, these walls don't exist anymore. Mm. Uh, and you know, effectively the county will go through and say, okay, those walls don't exist anymore. Um, the, there are things that we have to do on top of that. Um, you know, when, uh, one thing that we're waiting on right now is the air conditioning system was zoned and balanced for those three rooms to be there. Well, without mm -hmm. them there, we have to have a mechanical engineer go through, recalculate, rezone, and rebalance yeah. the entire HVAC yeah. system, uh, which is not necessarily a difficult thing to do. It's just okay. at the end of the day, we're waiting on somebody else to do something we need them to do. Right. And that, so that's yeah. been a lo large part of the delays, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because like in the shot that we that we see on the screen right here, this used to be. Um, there there used to be a big conference room there and so i guess like going back to what we were saying before it's a whole lot easier to say um you know this isn't here anymore so approve it rather than we put this bathroom and this shaky top floor here can you yeah. please approve it so some of the rooms we took out were just uh, the spaces uh didn't really jive with what we needed it to do as an organization right. and we needed yeah. uh need good open space we need some classrooms we need some workspace um, you know being able to lay out how we think the based on our membership and what's happened previously at the shop we try to make mm -hmm. the space of usable as people want to be using it and we're trying to get mm -hmm. that as close as possible and we're probably going to go through some growing pains um, to be able to make that space fit what our membership wants to do Right. And so we can't fit everything in this location, but we're going to try mm -hmm. to, you know, maximize what is used the most, uh, be it the laser cutter, the electronics, uh, crafts, uh, the workshop, all yeah. those things. We're, we're trying to maximize uh, the tools and the equipment and the space to what we think the, our, our membership in the past has had uh, interest in doing and showed up to yeah. do at the shop. And just that floor, yeah. Alone, just like removing that floor is is a horror story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it was a lot easier to take that up than it was supposed to be to take that all uh, up. It wasn't adhered to the the tile wasn't adhered to the floor at all, mm -hmm. and uh, it it. it couldn't have, it would have busted as soon as we tried to put any equipment across it or tables or anything uh -huh. that we'd be doing on a daily basis. And uh, so we had to take that uh, tiling up. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. it was absolutely not good. 
Um, yeah. Which, well, I think that's after the right there is after you. Oh, go ahead. Right. Right. That, that picture right there is after we'd removed the ceiling tiles and the floor yep. tiles and we're getting ready for this. A major effort up to this point that we've been doing is deconstruction. Uh, it's only been mm -hmm. what in the last month that we've had positive construction, the roof, yeah, the, the floor, the, roof, the yeah. floors. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking before, and this is what I was actually loading the, the slides up to, to show people. This right here is uh, is going to be the 3D printer area, right? Uh, rapid prototyping. Uh, it would be 3D uh, printing and laser cutting. And we're going to have it vented. So, so the, the vapors from the 3D printers and the laser cutters will be going outside. And mm -hmm. we have two laser cutters, which is a 90 watt, uh, which is a smaller 24 by 17, I think it is. And then we have one that actually is... 49 by 36 is that correct and i think it's 120 watt and you so you could actually feed a full sheet of plywood one third at a time through this machine if you wanted to yeah. um that's what we're going to have in there plus we'll have all of our 3d printers in there with uh, extraction hoods over the top of them so mm -hmm. uh 3d printers do give off a bit off gas a bit from the resin uh, we're yeah. going to make sure that that's uh, being extracted from the building. Uh, but that's going to be our mm -hmm. rapid prototyping right there is going to be our room yeah. for that. We're putting double doors in the back and in the front. So you would be able to come in with large pieces of material to be able to use that in the laser cutters if you needed to. Well, this right here yeah. on the uh, right, is that going to be one of the double doors? Yes. Uh, to the right, that L shape looking there, that used to be a window, a small cutout there right. was a window to an office. So that's going to be framed in and it's going to be a double door there. And then to mm -hmm. the left there through that one door frame, you see the other double door that will be able to come in from the back rolling door and we'll be able to get large equipment into the area. We'll be able to get it out. Now, it's a little hard to tell this from the picture, but this is actually a shot of the same area of uh, what I guess probably three or four months ago, something like that, like right after you no. guys got the tile. So, no. So this is actually uh, the, the ceiling that you're looking at. There is the uh, living space that was created in this building. It was that. Apartment yeah, that's right. Building. Yeah. So this is above. This is the space that was below that apartment area. And so this was yeah. we, we, the wall. The wall to the left, the wall that you, the far wall is, uh, mm -hmm. we're all knocked down. That ceiling was knocked down. Um, yeah. There, that, that was part of the space that uh, we're actually setting in that space right now where we're setting. Uh, oh, okay. Behind me, behind me is the remnants of that window you see to the right and mm -hmm. the, the, the right hand window. Um, You're in front oh, of okay. the door. I'm, oh, that's right. He's, he's by uh, just off of Tony's uh, right shoulder there is that window the remnants of that window that we're going to have framed in gotcha mm -hmm. okay very cool yeah so i guess this kind of goes back to what you were talking about a second ago because this is definitely a bigger area than what we had at the old shop on american pacific drive uh it's a lot bigger of an area for 3d printing so it sounds to me like that's that's our main thing is 3d printing is rapid prototyping well well if you combine the two spaces, if you combine the laser cutting and the 3D printing, yeah. it's pretty much a wash. I would say it's probably mm -hmm. within 20 or so square feet of where we mm -hmm. had laser cutting before and uh, 3D printing. We're simply putting them yeah. together for power requirements and exhausting, you know, being able to exhaust the area and you know, be able to extract yeah. the uh, 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 air out of the area. That's going to be so much nicer. At the, at the old shop, for, for people that don't know, uh, it used to be in the same area as, the, you know, the all the wood equipment and, you know, the, the metal workshop and all that stuff. So, you know, you'd be out there trying to laser cut something at the same time someone's using a planer and just, yeah. you know, so. so I think this be a lot better. Right there, you know, you're wearing hearing protection to use a laser cutter. And, yeah. you, know, you know, that's that's fun the first couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, but it, it gets old very noticing it. Yeah, and then you and then you go home and you, why is my ears ringing? Yeah, we, we don't need that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So having all the rapid prototype and laser cutting, three D printing in one area uh, helps yeah. out, and it's in a clean clean space. Uh, it's not in a shop space. 
with air conditioning mm-hmm. this time. Yes, yes. Your, free, your laser cutting will be in air conditioned space now. When we eventually get all the HVAC taken care of, because right. none of that stuff is turned on yet. Right. I mean, it's, it's a conversation okay, well, happening this weekend with our, our engineers. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, we can we can come back to, to HVAC in a second, but, but you mentioned the roof earlier. So what was what was the situation with the roof? Bad. It, yeah. <laughs> what yeah, wasn't the section. situation? <laughs> um, so there was an issue with the roof that someone patched, but they didn't patch it correctly. So that patch failed, which is a common thing to happen in flat roofs when you hire somebody who doesn't exactly know what they're doing. Mm. Um, because that patch failed, we had to remove, uh, they were saying 12 or 14 sheets of uh, plywood off of the roof. Four by eight sheets, 12, yes. 12 of those. Yeah. Um, because they had just rotted mm-hmm. completely through. Mm-hmm. And then they had to repair all of the, the damage up there and completely replace the uh, roofing material itself. So that took them almost a week yeah. to get that entire. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. And a 40 yard dumpster. I mean, they, they pulled a 40 yard dumpster worth of material off the roof in order to prepare it to be able to repair the roof. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was there was the patch that went wrong. And also in the uh, the what I'm going to call illegal living space that was created here, they had the bathroom. So they had to have air vents through the roof in order mm-hmm. to provide for the plumbing. Those yeah. penetrations through that roof had failed completely. And it, it, it damaged the, the roof. That was a large amount of that damage. It was coming through those oh. illegal, un, unpermitted um, permit uh, per, penetrations through the roof. So that, that also oh. reminds me of the other reason that entire um, uh, area had to get torn out. It was full of black mold. Yeah. Yep. We, uh, we, oh, in the bag, not in the not in the main area. No, not the main area. That that oh, uh, right. apartment kind of setup they had. Yeah, it, the whole bathroom, right. everything was full of black mold. Yeah, I, I think we probably it was probably eight feet high and six or seven feet wide of an entire wall that was just covered in it. Mm-hmm. And we were in here deconstructing mm-hmm. that and trying to mitigate it. And we're uh, it's still being mitigated, and it's been a challenge. And yeah. uh, reconstruction is going to fix that. Uh, but anything that is touched by that is basically getting deconstructed and removed, replaced. It, it's all you can do. Yeah. You, you can't yeah. like say, oh, well, we can fix that. No, you can't. You got to remove it. Yeah. You got to replace it. Yeah. You're not going to wipe it down with bleach. It's not nope. going to work. <laughs> that, that's going cool. to work while you're working on it. So it's going to keep yeah. it in place so it doesn't affect you as much. But right. You, you still have to wear a respirator. You still have to be careful. And, you know, we didn't, yeah. you know, it was like, hey, how can we help? Well, how do you feel about working around black mold for two days? Mm-hmm. Who's going to volunteer for that? Yeah. And a lot of right. people, once they found out about it, they simply left. And we said, okay, that's fine. I yeah. mean, we're, 100% we're not go going do to that. put you in a situation that you don't feel comfortable with, right. that you don't feel safe mm-hmm. with to get this done faster when right. we really don't need to. Right. And there's been a pandemic on, which has made things difficult to be able to organize, to be able to communicate, to be able to like move forward with. And being able to like organize the team that came in here and deconstructed this, we were, you know, yeah. we were all trying to wear masks. We were all trying to, you know, personally separate from each other. But at some point, yep. you know, you know, Tony and I are standing next to each other in a space, you know, running chainsaws. That's in basic, basically at one time we were in a very small closet with respirators mm-hmm. on using chainsaws to cut through studs to be able to drop a ceiling above us. That, mm-hmm. That's pretty much what came out of it. So that's, that's how crazy it got for a moment. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So this is uh, right. actually deconstructing the thing that you were just talking about, right? That's right. This, this is the... Uh, um, this is the floor of the apartment above. 
that we're cutting into. Mm -hmm. You can see the cuts we did went across sideways, and Tony just dropped that one. Mm -hmm. You can see like he's going to come back over there. He's got the longer chainsaw and go all the way through the uh, the stringer there. Mm -hmm. And so there yeah. it goes. Boom! There's a big. It, it fell down in about a six foot mm -hmm. section of that there. Nice. Yeah. So this is even earlier. So this, there's a really good shot right there of, of how the old kitchen was and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you got that off. Of it, a weird you know, story. just, just stuff falling over. We, we were yeah. cutting everything up in the sides and across the top saws, saws, and yeah. just pushing it and watching it yep. fall. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Let me, let me throw one more up here. Yeah. Winter's here is like spring day everywhere else. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, this is more of uh, deconstructing yeah, the top room, like you guys. Oh, well, yeah, that's about. definitely second floor. Yeah, we were throwing the walls out of there. Yeah. Here we go. We're just pulling them down. Boom. Yeah, you can see my red hat <laughs> on the other end of that, right over there. There you go. Where's one of the good ones of us taking down the big wall on the bottom. Oh man, that wall fell. Oh, yeah. that was awesome. All oh, it does. I wonder. Let's see. I've got more videos here, but now now they're playing. They weren't early. It's taken a long time to like an, an effort to be able to like get this to where we can deconstruct. And like I said, we are in the construction mode now to where we're putting things in, putting things back, mm -hmm. uh, making it a livable, usable space. Yeah. I mean, we, nice. we moved in, well, we moved all of the equipment in Thanksgiving week. Yep. And that was a task in amongst itself. Oh my God. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it took a good month before we were, before we had closed on all of the paperwork and we were actually able to start doing anything yeah. of value. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, were we in, had moved in actually before, what, what were you going to say? We, we, we had put a large enough deposit down that the sellers right. were confident that we were going to be able to take over the proper, uh, the property legal. And yeah. so we, we did that and they gave us a go ahead to be able to move in, but we couldn't actually start swinging hammers or cutting anything until like the signatures were on the paperwork. And because that of COVID sense. and because of, uh, of holiday season. So, you know, Thanksgiving to New uh, Christmas, everybody goes on vacation somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was happening. So we couldn't get anything to process. And I think we finally got the process like on like the 20, 7th or the 28th of december like we could actually start moving at that yeah. point yeah yeah i think that was it was a very end of december yeah and i think on on new year's eve we got our first dumpster drive right. here yeah there, and that's when we started tearing down the front yeah that's that's us moving in that's a forklift truck after truck after truck of uh of uh equipment being moved from one side to the other yeah, this is this is wow. what I was talking about. Oh my god, look at that! Yeah, so these are all the walls we tore down. We had to pull all the doors, yep. pull all the all the windows. And, and by the way, if you just tap that 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 glass, it explodes on you. Um, oh, that's fun. Yeah, it was a fun experience. So it is incredibly <laughs> fun when you get to say "screw it" and just chuck those things into a dumpster. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well, that's um, true. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, uh, we went through this, uh, this to the right there through that door is where uh, rapid prototyping is. There's, there's the kitchen again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's electronics through that window there. It's going to be our electronics area. Yep. There yeah. we go. We're going to look. I didn't there. really yeah. take, I didn't really take too much of a picture of that, you know, recently. Yeah. This is old. Uh, I didn't take a, a picture of it recently because it's just a room that's even more yep. full of stuff than that one. Yeah, it, it, it was much more full. And then we got a pod and they took a bunch of stuff away into storage for us. So we could have oh, some, good. Uh, we, so we can move, we had moving rooms so we can move stuff around and yeah. we had to the work to work. And this is like walking back to their bathroom to the left that no longer exists. This is that workspace. This is actually where we're sitting now. That, that room that, that you see here. We're in that, but we're yeah. in this big open space now. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and then this is going to be, and I didn't get any pictures of this at all when I was up there the other day. I, I got to say, this is going to be I, the. I, I got to say, all those people who were at the sin shop who put stuff on pallets and then put shrink wrap around those pallets, they're my heroes. I, I, I don't, there, there is no way 
that we could have uh, successfully moved as well as we did without all of that effort of people putting stuff on pallets and shrink wrapping it for us. And it was a huge effort and many people helped. And that yeah, is definitely, the, it, it's like, yeah, we drove the truck, we did the forklift, we did all the stuff like that. But people doing those small things like that is a huge help. And everybody goes, oh, it's just a, sil- s- s- a simple thing. It's not, it, no. it, it's, yeah. it contributes and it means something. It, it allows us to put our effort into the things that realistically only we were able to do. It, it took a lot of effort from a lot of people just because we're the ones oh, did, the did. And doing the stuff. And yeah. there's there's a ton of people who chipped in and put Very effort behind so. this and did a lot of things. A lot of big equipment got moved. A lot of little mm-hmm. boxes got put on pallets and they got taken off of yep. pallets and they got put on shelves and they got things got done and it, it didn't Absolutely. do it by itself a lot of people did nope. yeah and then you know we had uh let's see i actually at the time i've, I've got the i've got the the show docs from then i've got uh, let's see nuclear mic zenify kai mcnut nut forge dragon flames exhaust jed timka miss jackalope elemental and uh and many 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 more oh and mr jones for handling all the yep. waiting on hold forever stuff you yep. know, of course, Crux, yep. uh, Akeen, you yep. two, you know, like yep. just all kinds of just just crazy amounts of work, right. crazy amounts yep. of work. It's it's funny because it's like, you know, on one hand, it's like, oh, well, it's, it can't be that big of a deal. You just go in and you set some stuff up and you're done, you know, but like it's it's there's a lot to it. You're essentially oh. moving into a place. So this go. is the uh, yeah, this is the current print of. Right of uh, of the shop that's our ideal space that's that's our engineered space that we're going to be doing one of the things that was requested by our architect and by our mechanical mm-hmm. engineering and electrical engineering is we yeah. can't just say hey there's going to be a bunch of machinery in the back and they go oh, okay so we have to say like these are the machines that's going to live in this space and this is the power requirements for those machines this mm-hmm. is well, we need to be able to make this space operational. And so in order for them to the county to put their stamp, their permit stamp on there, we have to go through this list and be able to say, here are the machines that we're going to operate in, at this facility. Mm-hmm. And so that is what you're seeing there is planned uh, space planned out to what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Well, that's. So, That's the incredibly rough, incredibly stripped down. This is the bare minimum that the city actually needs to know about. Right. Arrangement of everything. Right. Uh, Essentially the stuff that's going to take power that's bigger than 110. Right. Yes. Right. There you go. Yeah. If, if it's not a yeah. toaster oven size piece of equipment or, or draws like a toaster oven, then they need to know about mm-hmm. it. And so those are the pieces of equipment that does it. Awesome. Uh, and then the one on the right is more or less for us as an organization of what they thought the front area was going to be laid out as. Um, oh, okay. Where, where tables, chairs, equipment, all of that kind of stuff was going to live. Um, that is in no way how it's actually going to work because we haven't really figured that out yet. We, we gave them a rough idea of what we think is going to work. Mm-hmm. Is it going to work? We're going to find out. At the end of the day, most of that stuff is on wheels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or absolutely. if it's not, we're going to put it on wheels. Yes. And hopefully mm-hmm. we have a nice smooth floor to roll those wheels on. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, though. I mean, you don't want it too smooth. Because if it's too no, smooth, no, then you're not going to have any grip. Yeah, you, you need right. some traction. Yeah. If somebody spills something, you know, somebody comes in, you know, goes, goes, whatever, heels to wherever. I don't know. That, I don't know. That know phrase. The little wet floor placards. Those, those are the key. Yeah. That adds a thousand uh, percent friction. On that note. <laughs> so, so uh, just uh, wanted to give you guys a, it is in fact the top of the hour. And uh, one thing that we never want to slip on is the uh, mid show announcements. 
And uh, this is all being done on behalf of the Sin Shop. And uh, Sin Shop is a maker hacker space, of course, located in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, we have the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, uh, we're officially closed for innovation. In fact, that's the whole point of the whole episode. And uh, but if you'd like to come check out the shop or give us a hand and uh, and help get it back in action, join our discord uh, to find out all that and much, much more. Now, to do that, you're going to go to sinshop.org forward slash discord to find the latest information on the shop. And uh, to make sure you're notified of future events, including virtual ones just like this, joyceandmeup.com forward slash sin shop. We have some guests coming for you. Mm. We're going to have Law back uh, from the uh, from the Nerds of the Round. We're going to have Sebastian back, uh, also from the Nerds of the Round. And we're going to have, uh, oh, I uh, didn't confirm him yet, so I'm not going to say. But we also have, we also have the return of the Vegas Combat Robotics team. I'm not going to call them the Jackpot team anymore because because they did Jackpot and they're the people from Jackpot. And if you saw BattleBots, you know Jackpot. But they're going to come back and we're going to talk all about the regional area stuff. And we, we, we kind of missed that last time. We got caught in, in BattleBox land. So we're going to come back again and we're going to talk all about that. But that's coming in about four weeks. So make sure you stay tuned to this space. You know, if you're uh, watching us on YouTube, like, subscribe, ring bells, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. All right. Anyway, back to it. I can't wait to have them back. They were so much fun. I absolutely loved having the the Vegas Combat Robotics guys on. It's another great thing about the shop. It's right next to a Sonic. So it's next to a lot of things. Uh, I think we it's got next to a lot. Uh, yeah. We got um, you know uh, Home Depot. We got material supplies uh, really close by. Yeah, we got Home Depot, Lowe's, Metal Supermarkets, Tandy Leather, Harbor Freight. Uh, and Walmart, Office Depot. I mean, I bet if you drew like you a mile take- and a half circle around the shop, you're going to like find all of those things. Yeah, pretty yep. much including a mile and a half need. Yep, including wrestling and classes. Close. Yep, and we're well, close to the airport. Just right next door to us. That's yeah. That's we, what I'm we got a gym next door to us. Yeah, uh, we we're close to the airport. We're easy to get to yep. off of the. Uh, major freeways. Uh, I mean, it's a good location. The only downside yeah. is we are no longer within drunken stumbling distance of two bars. Yeah, yeah, that's a downside. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's a trade-off thing. You got to take the good. You take the bad. It you is. take them both, and there you have. It's this is a fairly that's quiet uh, location. Mm-hmm. Um, we've yeah. been, uh, been here a lot and uh even though we are close to an airport it doesn't get mm-hmm. loud here um yeah it will it, it's a good it's it's it doesn't I, I, get loud unless something goes wrong right right okay i'm gonna give you that uh um, or someone's operating the planer well that's not the, that loud in the in the previous shop one of the things that's one of the things we want to cover in the previous shop there wasn't hmm. a full wall between the shop space and and the uh, what would be considered like the yeah. assembly space or the usable space mm-hmm. before. Yeah. And like you said, you were three right. D. You, you're laser cutting in the shop space. You're not going to be doing that anymore. We have a full wall in between there. Yeah. And we hope to be able to noise mitigate as much as possible to be able to make the nice. uh, meetup space as quiet as possible, even though somebody might be running a 120 decibel tool in the back. Uh, It's not perfect, but we are Mm -hmm. definitely working towards being able to mitigate the sound that goes through this wall uh, towards the front. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the old thing. Yeah, yeah. I miss it. Anybody remembers the... so much fun. You know, yeah. No, no. I do, too. I do, too. Like, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the 3d printing place you know like yeah. this room was so much smaller than the one yeah. that we're going into yeah. now and plus well, we're not going to have the server rack in there too no that's going into crafts we're going to punish different mm-hmm. people this time yep well that was <laughs> that was one thing that i mean i'll probably be on the show again discussing just that is space utilization and storage philosophy yeah, of yeah. the new mm-hmm. location. We definitely need uh, to to contain some activities that were happening before. Well, it was Oh. 
the the big thing that I mean I had told you Hong um, before mm-hmm. and a number of other people is you need to understand how you work before you can shift to how you want to work. And mm. at the old space, that space was very much learning how the shop truly worked, how people operated, what they did with, uh, with storing tools and with, with cleaning up after themselves and all of those kinds of things. And so when, now when you say how you work, just to make sure I'm, just to make sure I got the, the foundational stuff here. Like when you say how you work, what you're, what you're talking about is, um, like where you put your tools, like, do you keep everything in arm's reach? Do you put the tools back every time you use them or like, like, am I in the right neighborhood there? Well, it's in the, I mean, I'll use myself for an example because I know me, okay. I've spent many times learning me, um, for most projects, I am very, you know, einsy feinsy. You do step one on everything, then you mm-hmm. do step two on everything, and step three, and so forth and so forth. Oh, okay. So I go through, I take out the tools to do step one. I do step one until it's complete, and then I put those tools away and move to the tools for step two, right? Sure. Yep. Well, a lot of our members happen to operate like squirrels on meth. And they bounce around between everything because that's the next thing that pops up into their mind without Mm -hmm. fully completing the last thing that they were doing. So Mm. putting tools away either becomes they simply left them where they were using them or they just want to quickly throw them wherever they fit. Yeah. Uh, So it becomes a challenge to organize and arrange things in a way that makes it easy for people to put things away in that manner where it's just, okay, toss it there and you're on to the next thing along with making it easy for the next person to come through and say, all right, I need this specific tool. Where is it? But that's a whole other conversation. Different conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess we, maybe we should save that for that. Well, okay. So just like as a, as a teasy tease for that, then, um, yeah. are you, is, so are you saying is that you are designing the shop to work well with both people with a, with a procedural person and a do the whole thing at once person? Are you trying to accommodate both people or, or is it more of a, a situation where you have to train the users? Uh, I wish I could train the user, but you guys took away my cattle prod. <laughs> Um, realistically, and, and we stopped you from throwing no, wrenches. There's no way to get both groups to really work in harmony with each other. I think because you're always going to be pissing off one of the other. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do, you know, if if you go through and you do like my workshop is set up. I mean. My, my wrench drawer, it is aircraft fog foam. Yeah. It has a spot and there's only one spot that every single wrench can fit into. Mm-hmm. That's going to piss off the people that just want to take the wrench and throw it in the drawer when they're done. Right. Right. But it's going to very much please the people that, oh, hey, this wrench should be here. And if it's not here, it's lost to the ether somewhere else. Mm. Right. Well, trying to balance those two gets incredibly difficult. However, what I have found is the organization and the users itself gravitates more towards the ordered chaos theory than the ordered order theory. So Mm. I'm shifting a lot of the organization into that ordered, ordered chaos theory. Where, you know, if they are, say, you need the jigsaw, um, the jigsaw and every, every tool, every blade, all of the things associated with the jigsaw are simply going to be any bin marked jigsaw. And you can pull the bin out, use the tool, and you don't have to have a specific place to put everything back to. 
However, you know, if I need the jigsaw or the blades or the wrenches or anything for the jigsaw, it's going to be in this one box. Hmm. Okay. So it's basically like, you know, everything you need to jigsaw is here. Everything I yeah. need to, um, uh, to use a, a like a, oh, what do they call those? The jigs where you put the pocket holes, the creep? Yeah, the, the pocket hole jig is going to be pocket in the one spot. The, the routers yeah. are going to be in the one thing. You know, the sanders, mm-hmm. it, it's all going to be set up in that kind of way where it's easy to find the item and all the, uh, the associated things with the item and you mm-hmm. don't have to pay that much attention to how you put it all back in the hopes that this will help people put everything back when they're done with it. At least in a proximity to where other people can find it. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, so what do you yeah. do about like common things like a, like a screwdriver, like a Phillips screwdriver? Because so many different people we, can use that. We just have so many of them. They're just mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, we, we pick up, you know, 20 number two Phillips screwdrivers and we house them at various locations. Yep. Everybody gets a number two screwdriver. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. I got to say, you know, originally I was not a fan of getting rid of the middle rooms, but now that I see it in action, it's not bad. I do like it. Nope. I do like it open. It yeah, it's pretty good. Is the yeah. elect? Oh, uh, yeah. Is, is the electronics room, is that bigger or smaller than the old space? It kind of feels a little smaller, right? So... Pretty much everything lost about 10 to 20% of its overall square footage. Um, okay. Some areas lost substantially more. Some mm-hmm. areas we tried to have them lose less. Um, mm. But in the end, I mean, we're going from, I want to say it was five or 6,000 square feet at the last location to about four to 5,000 square feet here. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think we're I think we're sitting at right about four thousand square feet here. But we're doing mm-hmm. things like what we're doing in electronics is we're we're getting actual electronic benches, which well, are, is going to give us more uh, u- u- utilization that, of the space. That was that was the other kind of shift in philosophy. Um, mm. If you had been to the old or the American Pacific location, you would know that in electronics you had maybe one usable workstation at any given time. And right. the other ones were usually covered in crap. I mean, any horizontal surface became a storage surface. Right. Well, when we realized that, we said, okay, we're going to set up one bench with electronics test equipment and keep that clear mm. because we only ever need one at a time. And then right. we'll set up a couple of basically mobile packages where it's, you know, meters, some, some tools, a soldering iron, stuff like that in a box that you can take out of electronics into the main work area, use it, put it all back in the box, and then put the back box back on the shelf in electronics when you're done. Hmm. If you okay. scroll down, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see our main area there that has a lot of tables they have the big uh, construction we have our big assembly table we like to call it and then we have our individual tables or classroom tables from there and uh, going down the center of that room starting about six feet off the kitchen it's going to be power from above you're going to be able to Mm. like uh uh, lock into power above there and we are Mm -hmm. going to put air above there so if you need power tools you need soldering tools you need air to drive high-speed grinders or or assembly tools you'll be able to do yeah. it right there and be able to oh uh, oh air so, too and we're going to put air into that area as well uh so you can like if you're like your model builder or or your yeah. uh, miniature uh, miniature painter you'll be able to spray paint right there you'll, well i mean you'll be able to airbrush build airbrush we, we don't we're, we're right, not, right, airbrush. Like, I'm sorry. It's not like you can drive your car into that space right. and give it a fresh right. coat no. of, of paint or anything. A- airbrush no, is small to model. Airbrush. You'll be able to run small scale air tools. Right. Um, in the area, okay. 
without having to worry about an air supply. Right. Right. So, so uh, if you're cool. like a, uh, if you're a drone builder, if you're a robot builder, mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. a, um, a model builder or a, a miniature uh, painter, sculptor, this, this is where you're going to primarily be working. It's an air conditioned space. It has the power mm -hmm. that you need is directly over your head. It's going to be, it's yeah. going to have air available to drive high speed tools or airbrushes that you need to do to be able to do your work. And so uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of the activity is in the common space, and we want that there because we want people to commune. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's our uh, yeah. is what we want. And so there is a big heavy shop in the back, but a lot of our members are are much lighter. They're crafts, uh, they're arts, uh, they're model builders, they're they're small things, and you know sometimes working on a, a on a drone is you know you can do that or a robot right there on your table you can do some of it in yeah. electronics you can do some of it on assembly but we want you to be part of the community we want you to be part of the space we're trying to make the space as usable as possible if you want to teach a class and you have like nine people and they're all going to assemble a small robot we have a big table with power for soldering and for air tools to be able to assemble your robot right in our common educational area the guys from VCR are going to love that, by the way. Yeah, we're, we're designing around that kind of that. stuff. We want them to come They're in here and it. build robots and show people that they can they can build robots. Not that they can build robots, but other people can build robots, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that is it. It's not a matter of like showing, you know, look at what I can do. It's 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 a matter of look at what you can do. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of how it has to be. Yeah, you right. can do this too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Gorgie's in the uh, in the chat says uh, this floor plan is seriously flawed. There isn't a single jukebox. Well, you can make one. You don't know that there that if or if not, there's going to be a yeah. disco ball, and I guarantee you, you should come check out if there's going to be a disco ball, and there I will is either confirm oh. or deny that there is going to be a jukebox and a disco right. ball along with other things and lasers <laughs> i i'm not saying there will be i'm not saying anything I'm not at saying all there is either i'm just saying you need exactly. to check out if there's going to be a disco ball with lasers on it you, you don't know it's, it's right it could happen it could right try no it really could actually <laughs> no this is it's going to be great uh as far as the jamba juice I've had I've had I've had bad experiences with Jamba Juice. I, it's, it's, I, I'm it's, it's, indifferent about them. I, I it, it is I mean, a thing. Yeah, yeah. If, if you mean, like it, God I, bless. I made, Go better, forward, but, I made better squishies at home. Like I'll take beer over that. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. Well, you know that's what they call um, slushies on Simpsons is squishies, right? Oh, 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 gotcha. All right. Well, uh, let's see. So speaking of, no, not, not doing that at all. Uh, uh, it is in fact, uh, the, uh, end of the main show here. So, uh, this is just the, uh, the, just the first hour of the, uh, of this here event. Uh, we're going to be heading on over to the post game for those of you who are on Twitch. If you are watching us currently on YouTube, I'm sorry, but this is where we must part ways. But hey, if you like what you see, if you like this episode, you want to see more like it, throw us a thumbs up. So let us know you care. And uh, if you want to see a, uh, you know, if you have any comments on the show, if you're like, ah, oh, this is garbage and this guy is stupid or whatever, let us know in the comments. And uh, we'd love to hear them. We do read them and we do reply to them. What'd you, what'd you, uh, what you got there, Vic? I want to shout out to the 23B listeners I know are watching. I, I just want to awesome. say thanks to, uh, to any of the Sin Shop people who came down during the demo. Oh my God, yes. Us out. In any yes. way. <laughs> showed up with food, help lift stuff, drag stuff to a dumpster. If you showed up and said, hi, thanks for doing what you're doing. We're thankful that you showed up and said that. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Not, not to mention all well, the people that put in real manual labor to get stuff done. And there was a absolutely. lot of people that did that. Yep. Yeah. The list I had uh, earlier, just, just to, just to, to hit it one more time. The, I guess the, the, some of the MVPs there, we had, Nuclear Mike, Zenify, Kai, McNutt, uh, Forge, Dragonflames, Exhaust, Jed, Timka, Miss Jackalope, Elemental, 
uh, and Mr. Jones, and much, much more. And of course, who could forget our fearless leader, Crux? That's but right. uh, but yeah, and especially you guys, man. Like like you guys, you guys had the the majority of this whole Fandango right on your shoulders. And 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 as much as you thank everybody else, I definitely thank you. Thank the two of you, seriously. Yeah. Uh, it- no, there's no effort that you can't contribute to the sin shop that isn't appreciated or isn't worth something. Absolutely. And I, I want to say that it's like people like, oh, I don't know how to do all this other stuff. It's like, well, then do the thing that you're good at, mm-hmm. you know, come up, show Absolutely. us what you're good at. And yeah. we that we learn stuff all the time from other people. And that's how people work. And so doesn't matter how what do you think oh all this other stuff's coming come around learn some stuff share some stuff that's what the sin shop is yeah. learning and sharing all right well we're gonna get out of here everybody have a great night and we'll see you on monday take care everybody have a great weekend